The practice of authentic allyship includes a lifelong practice of reforming our hearts, attitudes, and actions. Our indigenous neighbors have a saying. It takes a long time to grow a human being. Human beings are born into a culture. We learn from family or caregivers. We learn languages and soak in the meaning systems around us. We begin to create associations about ourselves and other people. These associations are very powerful in how we see the world and each other. They create what Banji and Greenwald in their book Blind Spot recognize as bias. A bias is an unconscious association that forms our first reaction to a person or situation. We all have them, but we can adjust for biases and learn to change them a bit over time. But since we have been formed in a caste system based on race, we have internalized the rules, written and unwritten, of that caste system. This causes us to associate certain types of behavior and worth to various groups of people. When we act on these biases without reflecting on them, we perpetuate the caste system itself. Our experiences and the biases they form in us can create internalized privilege and internalized oppression. It takes deep and sustained work to become aware of either. Both separate us from our own humanity and that of others, and this is a simplistic example. In the United States, being tall is often considered being better than being considered short. Being six foot three, I'm on the tall side. I was invited in this culture to a feel of higher status than those who are shorter than me. But what happens when I'm around people who are taller yet? What about other attributes I have that are not considered ideal? Instead of celebrating the diverse abilities of shorter and taller people, I can get caught in competitive status game, often without knowing I'm playing it at all. Human beings, according to Jonathan Haidt, tend to make decisions on a gut level. We then justify and support our decisions with logic and rationale. These gut reactions often arise from our biases and the expectations of our in-group. Once made, we tend to protect our decisions with confirmation bias by rejecting information that contradicts or even complicates our view. This makes learning difficult for human beings, and not just for other people, but for ourselves. The question is, will we commit to doing the work required to grow as human beings. Our growth involves being willing to acknowledge our biases and gut reactions and be willing to reassess them and even change them over time. Growth involves recognition that we are limited in our view of the world and that we be willing to recognize when we are wrong or when our view is incomplete. Growth means to recognize the impact of our actions and do the hard work of modifying our behaviors. In his book, The Righteous Mind, Jonathan Haidt lists six moral foundations that human beings use at a gut level to make decisions. His thesis is that people often make their gut decisions about complex topics through these moral foundations, or through a set of moral foundations that people value most. His analysis is that liberals tend to focus on a few of these values, while more conservative folk tend to use more of them. He also notes that the primary difference between conservatives and liberals is their openness to change. The first is the Care Harm Foundation. Second, the Fairness Cheating Foundation. The third, the Loyalty Betrayal Foundation. Fourthly, the Authority Subversion Foundation. Fifth, the Sanctity Degradation Foundation, and lastly, the Liberty Oppression Foundation. I have found his analysis to be important for three reasons. First, it helps us to see our own decisions and positions are more reactive than logical often. This invites us to be willing to reassess our own positions and attitudes and actions. Second, it helps us to see the possible validity 
of value systems that emphasize some of the other moral foundations, ones that we may not value so much. And lastly, it helps us to communicate more effectively with people on the basis of many of these moral foundations instead of just the ones that I care about or you care about. Martin Luther King Jr. taught that human beings are not responsible for the world into which we're born. But we are responsible for understanding it and for doing our work to make it a better place. Since the society we are born into forms us so deeply, it is challenging and often painful to understand how far short of justice our world is. Even more deeply, the society we're born into has contributed to our survival. So to question it can seem like we're jeopardizing our survival. That really hits us deeply. At Paths to Understanding, we believe that wisdom traditions and a community of wisdom can really help us to navigate this process of growth and change in life. These traditions and the communities that grow out of them can help us learn to value ourselves and our neighbors. They can help us to engage a set of values that have been useful across many times and societies. They can ground us in practices that help us breathe through the changes. At Paths to Understanding, we understand that wisdom traditions are a set of remembered stories, deep truths, probing questions, and a capacity for self-critique which all together helps us explore how human beings can live with meaning, community, and care for the earth. Father William Tracy, who together with Rabbi Raphael Levine founded Paths to Understanding, recently said to me, I hope I keep growing and changing until the day I die. He said this as he was 101 years old. It takes a long time to grow a human being. May we keep growing until the day we die, as our embrace of this growth process benefits both ourselves and our neighbors, and indeed the world. May we enjoy the process of growth and see it as a key part of our own valued humanity.